giants here while escape have a little bit of everything it's crazy uh, yeah, it's definitely a bit more far-fetched of a draft and i'm very anxious to see what they plan on doing with it battle. if you look at who's picking what and who's set up where it does look like it's going to be a support venomancer in era yeah. has taken rain on the axe yeah if well, it is what they have done the most uh i don't feel that that's what i would have been the most comfortable seeing but uh a farmed axe can definitely have a big impact against the hero like Drow. Of course, it's great against the against the uh, Dazzle as well. Loda, that's a friendly banter. These teams obviously have played against each other, I imagine, a couple of times, or at least scrim against each other a couple of times. This is just I mean. uh, casual Swedo Danish hate. It's a thing, a few hundreds of years, but uh, we're still good. I remember, you know, Kelly was mentioning in that interview we were talking about before that, you know, for Alliance, there actually wasn't. The, the best amount of scrim options out there because a lot of the tougher to competition at the time at least was over in, in the states mm -hmm. you know they were working with the summit star series and a lot of them just yeah. ended up boot camping there so i imagine that as oh, yeah. an alliance found some good time to most teams out. were boot camping in the u.s so if you're playing from europe it was hard to find uh good practice partners for sure uh especially for an event this big and we're gonna see a level one fight here yes, possibly Who's got that better level one? We'll see. Bulldogs five well, v four in front. He gets a huge the setup with the sticky, begins. but then they see trouble and they try to pull back. The roll's going to be there. Big physical hit from Aki with that heal. Good force escape to kind of pull out. And it's going to be Kenzie who ends up going down first. The Lions might not be done yet. Era focusing era, so he doesn't really get a whole lot of spins up. But that by the time they focus him, he's going to be as good as dead. Two kills for Alliance to start things off in game number two. Yeah, and that just shows how powerful they are. That heal from Dazzle did. A lot of damage as the Earth Spirit rolled up on the high ground. He had to immediately just run away. And uh, yeah, Racer just showing his prowess here in the fight. Uh, I don't know if Escape were anticipating Radiant's all the lines to be there, but they definitely attack. got kind of coaxed into a bit of an awkward situation. Here's a roll, and it's set up with the Gale from Cinderin. Is it going to be enough slow power to allow Air to get in for any sort of call? Any oh, at all? Right click? Just yes. The right click. Zindrin takes the last poke Radiant's of that one, and it's quick for escape to get their own kill on the board. Good damage done, and he can start pulling up now, or stacking even. Preparing stacks for your axe in the jungle would have been really, really good. Um, and mid lane, we just see high aggression here by Razor. This is a lane where it might be impossible for you, for an alchemist to farm, actually. Yeah, Koikfa can casually drop some acid spray and hope for the best, but as you mentioned, Razor, one of the best at being a mid lane matchup one-on-one. -on -one. Him, Viper, yep. OD, tyrants of the mid lane. And they really are, and Razor just matches up against this Alchemist so good in terms of the stealing his damage, running at him, and just zoning him out of the creeps. Looks like um, assistance is nearby. Yapsor looking for openings. This is what you see in any typical Earth Spirit game. But the problem is the targets and the abilities to be able to take the mid laners are oh, becoming is, a lot tougher. He has very low HP on S4 though. Yeah, he's trying to hold true. these creeps outside of this the tower range. This is his chance right here and now. He's got to connect with the rolling boulder too. Yeah, if he gets a roll, they don't have stun yet. He wants level 3 on the Alchemist. He's so close. There's the roll. It does connect. He gets it. With the slow and the acid spray and a stun flying out. It should be good enough. To get it done. That's what you want to do. He will be no. alive. It looks like he will get taken down. S4 actually gets the note for that. And Bulldog with a haste room wildly appears. Oh, God. He started He's going. The sticky icky, and he burns him down blah, 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 the whole way. Yeah. He's going to be a very happy bat rider now, being part of four kills already at two and a half minutes. And he gets a bottle charge for his efforts by S4, and uh, he can make his way back into the jungle, farm up a little bit, or even head back and just uh, TP up on top lane again. Fortunate for escape, they tried to set up this whole tactile initiation for the mid lane. They end up getting it done, but only to hand S4 a kill back and a good uh, positive uplift there for Bulldog once more. Yeah, definitely. That was that was a nice, nicely timed gank with the uh, Alchemist level 3. I liked most of it, but just unfortunately, Bulldog was already on top of that with the Benched counter gang. S4 with the S4 rune. How cute. <laughs> yep. Yapsor still uh, looking to find a home for himself. Kezu has acknowledged the, the troubling off lane and has forfeited it and has taken his business into the jungle strictly, it looks like. Era is, of course, freeing up space with this axe, letting Sinran get his levels, and now they're thinking about doing something, but this is now already a very strong... They do have Yapsor coming in from the rear, too. Let's we'll see if Bulldog can find his way out of this. Spin, spin! 
Era needs the spins here, not getting a whole lot of it. There goes the lead in the Boulder Smash, and that's going to be good. They'll get the Bat Rider down and escape Fire back once again. Yeah, it is a very high kill potential kind of lane. The Venomous Scale makes it very hard for Bat Rider to get away. And uh, Bulldog got kind of baited there. He got like three or four st uh, stacks onto the Venomancer and was hoping to get a kill on Syndran, but Syndran is too sly for that. Sneaky little bastard. As per usual. Bulldog back though. Into the tower and we'll be in a good spot, but Yapsor continues his movement this time accompanying the Koikba Alk in the mid lane because it is a, a bit of a two on two as EGM also kind of matching and mirroring Yapsor. It is a hard day as well for Koikba. This this game right here, playing Alchemist on mid lane being 7 CS and the rune control is coming out from Alliance yeah, as well. He is getting just crushed. Yeah. As for, no surprise, 23 and 14 to denies. I mean, that's some 8.5k MMR right there. You know, S4 started playing on his 8k account again. He's going for 9k, man. He's no longer scared. He's he's ready to, to ascend into the 9k realm with yeah. the few select. Indeed. And uh, Bulldog again might be uh, baited into aggression here, or is it Syndra who's going to be feeding this time? Woo! He oh, chokes it! Five stacks, he sidesteps the Gale and easily torches and burns him up. Yeah, this time Syndra, you know, pretending to be baiting, I guess, but there was no one there to save him, and uh, Bulldog calls him on his bluff. Yeah, probably grinning a lot about that one here, but look at this, we got a smoke response play here in the bottom lane. This could be Yaps or Double Ion Shell. Gonna be set up. They're looking for their target. It is load up. They make their move. They connect wonderfully. And he tries to get the gust off, but the boulder smash is gonna be able to connect, which will pop off the stun. They get the surge. They need a little Four bit grave. more. Heal is there, and Ake holds the grave. Will finally dish it out. Will they overcommit or the drow? It looks like they will. Beautiful defensive play. He gets the gust off, and it looks like they'll be able to end up Man. with two kills for Loda. Double kill. And <laughs> Bulldog also gets a kill top lane together with EGM. They managed to bring down Era on his axe in fact. So beautiful play all over the map. That was really clutched by Loda and Ake as well. Suddenly Alliance are up eight to three at the end of that. They're back. They are. It mm. looked like just unfortunate mistime. The Iron Shell, I guess, expired there at the end as Yapsor was making chase onto the Drow. Uh, I just mean, didn't quite have enough firepower. Ake coming in there with a the heal in the that, grave yeah. just turned everything around as well. The second gust flying out, pushing them away. Not a bit better. They're going for it again, and Ake is back in his position once more. Here he is, gets off the poison, has the grave if he feels yeah, he's it's holding necessary, it. Oh, but he, he knows it's not. Yeah, he actually doesn't have mana after that poison touch as well, so good thing he didn't need it. Uh-oh, trouble's coming. Look at that, it's S4. Moment in, pops off the nuke. It's going to force Yapsor to totally roll away, and he'll be good. He's going to be just fine. Meanwhile, though, Alchemist gets a little bit of breathing room as soon as the Racer leaves. Racer with a 24 denies. He's really been just cranking down on his poor Alchemist. Alchemist will try to recover, but already a big amount of momentum Radiance coming away of Alliance. You're stringing attack. kills across yeah. the board. They're winning all three lanes. The right. fact that you're behind net worth as an Alchemist to your enemy mid is just never acceptable to you. You you always want to be ahead by at least a few thousand <laughs> heading into a 10 minute mark. Right now he's behind by 600. And uh, we'll see how much escape feel value to be able to strike back in a sense to get Alk back into the grind. It looks like Bulldog made an approach towards the mid lane here and runs into both Koikpa and Cinderin, but he'll be able to fly up and above and away from any trouble. While mid lane, they're making their own possible approach. Yaps are looking to get in position here. Guess who's stealing creeps though? Stealing the big creeps here with the Iron Shell. Very good little move. Getting that experience taken away from the enemy and yep. uh, of course the uh, Bank gold. Wow, that gets even Yapsor a lot of XP. He was about to get to four, and now he's quick to four and a half yeah. off of that. Uh-oh, they ran to EGM. It's a big ogre, though. I don't think they want to commit for this, so they decided to pull off. Plus, with Dazzle Dyer's nearby, this is pretty much an impossible mission, so they got to get the hell out. Yeah. Two needs to pop his wand and maybe a TP here, but EGM's chasing him, and he has a fire blast. Oh, he's trying oh, to be sneaky, not, but happening. yeah, no. It's happening, all ogre. Sir. You got a pointy head. It's he's trying to walk past, but... It's Radiant's ogre. It's hard to watch. Takes him into a back alley and beats him down with a bat. Yeah, it comes up with a b bloody club after that. Like, yep, yeah, had uh, some issues to take care of. And uh, now we see Alliance up, up, and above. 9-3 to three now with already a little over a 3k net worth advantage. They're in a solid spot. Loda in the bottom lane, man. He's been doing work. He's got a Dragon Lance already. Look how hard he hits. Yeah, he's 
is really adding up agility as well for the rest of his team to get extra damage as well. Dyer's so he has the power tower. threads and the dragon lance now. Really good stuff for the Razor on the mid lane as he has uh, plus 34 damage. Radiant on the move. They pop out a scan to see if there is an alchemist farming nearby. They're not going to catch them there. Nice. So they head that direction, look to go up and around. And on a stacked small camp is where he's been farming. So they find the uh, results of what happened there. Bulldog comes out big in a fight. He walks away with a blink dagger. Dire scan coming out as well. He pretty much knows where they are, but did not catch them with a the scan. Oh, he feels safe oh, now, no. but... Oh, can they get close enough? And Ignite will be there, but it only slows him down a too bit. Deep. Bit yeah. too deep. They're gonna run away. They forced out a TP by Venomaster, but he did cancel it as well, staying down on bottom lane. Radiance middle tower is so, under attack. Alliance not gonna be able to get the catch they were hoping for on that smoke movement and or escape. They will be able to avoid the trouble using the game sense to recognize that Alliance are doing something a bit fishy here, but yeah, they just go back into the grind and even though Bulldog doesn't get a fight, he wants to get his blink dagger, he's just gonna have it by farming out a wave or so. Yeah, definitely. Just keep farming for a little bit more than Alliance should be looking to take the tier one towers and get some control on this map because that's how you shut down the Alchemist. You limit his space, limit the area that he can use to farm. And uh, aggression will pay off. I'm wondering to see here. I'm sure soon enough Alliance will ramp the pace up here, particularly in the bottom lane where the jump can maybe push through it. S4 is punishing this mid tower a lot. He's just slapping away at it. Um, of course, the creeps get pulled back by Yapsor, so I'm not going to take the tower in one sweep, but he's been dealing a lot of damage. And he's going right for the mech, so he's going to be the one to bring the sustain for his team. I think that he is the appropriate mech cannon in this game that's really oh, yeah. not a lot of support somehow managed to farm it up. And uh, can we see a deny? Sindor with the wards. Not, not, not strong enough. He tried though. Yeah, three wards, micro together, still not <laughs> as good as, unfortunately, Lota's heavy hit. He'll be able to get the last hit on that one. And they could follow it up with a secondary tower takedown, possibly here in the mid lane. It looks like Alliance have already rotated in a couple backliners, including, uh, including a certain lot of damage on He's the racer. He's got a blink, ready to go. Pops in, gets the lasso. It's going to be on Yapsora. Pretty oh. safe and easy target there. Good thing he didn't get to grab on the Alchemist instead. That would have been even worse for escape. So they're probably happy, even though they lost the hero and lost the tower. You have to be happy that you didn't lose before as well. Alliance not done yet, though. Posturing up in a more offensive front as they continue moving forward here. They're gonna get some early pot shots possibly There's this tier two. Some really good base defense though by Venomancer and Alchemist Acid Spray. Yeah. You have the wards and acid spray, it's so hard to break into. You should go for all the tier one towers if you're alliance in this spot, and then just think about Roche, maybe keep ganking with the Batrider. And um, yeah, Batrider is actually stealing the enemy jungle right now with a Firefly. Yep, already has his blink, looking to acquire a four staff in due time. Cinder will see him and try to snipe what he can away. But yes, uh, Alliance are nearby, just in case trouble approaches Dyer's here. Top tower but is uh, under attack. I was just going to say that maybe Escape's aggression might have been put on hold for a bit. But look at this, they oh. smoke and they go on the move here. It's a good time because, I mean, they got Yapsor's level six. He's actually level seven, but they have the Magnetizer to work with now. The Blink Iron Shell Axe is really powerful. Is they can bring down the Dazzle if they see him. Let's see. Dyer's they see him for now. Tier fun. one is going to be dropped. The Lions take that and continue to move right down the lane. Radiant Bullet Escape try to make a jump from attack. the trees here. Oh, they've been spotted by the ward now, though. The smoke just ran out. Uh -oh, they know. Bulldog takes it in the skies. He's looking for a setup play, possibly for a blink lasso. Makes his commitment. Gets the grab. It's on Yapsor, who already gets the magnetized. Well, Aaron jumps in. Gets a nice two-man call. Lota gets a save, though, with the grave. Keeps him alive and well, but Koiku could end up waiting for him a bit, and he'll end up getting burned down. They lob out the stun, and they'll get the follow up takedown on the down. The move go for Bulldog. He flame breaks them back, but the chase is on, and Koiku is fast, man. He's got that haste through, and he just chops him down. Era though, the man left behind here between EGM and S4 will be dropped. And Alliance are able to string together a couple of kills themselves too with a killing I, spree now on S4. I have to say it, the Venomous Wards actually paid dividends there. It was really important. They got one pot shot off on the Batrider so he couldn't get that clean initiation. And that made Alliance have a little bit awkward positioning because he had to back off, get the Blink Dagger off cooldown and then go. But during this time, Loda got caught out on his Draw Ranger and uh, things escalated from there, let's say. That haste rune was, of course, a big part of the team fight as well, though. Escape. Get yeah, a lot I was of actually chase. Uh, was seeing their positioning. I was a bit nervous that Koiko wasn't going to be able to be there in time, but wouldn't you believe it? The, the mighty frog blessed him with a haste rune, so he was there in, in good time and able to participate plenty and oh, yeah. help a bounce back play because he had been 
beaten down so bad in that laning phase. Yeah, now he's recovered pretty well. He is sort of even with the racer and net worth. He definitely still needs to pull ahead, but looking at those creeps that he's killing mid right now, he's taking a, taking a lead in the CS and uh, or in the net worth department. Now at 7.5k, I mean, you would hope to expect to see at least an alchemist for a team you want to win be there at the top at this point. Oh yeah. Start to really climb ahead. Drow is nipping at the heels though. And in fact, looking to go for more is bottom lane, Loda and S4, both sieging away at this tier 2. We look to see what Escape are going to be doing for a response. They're already Oh, they've been scanned. Up, but they have been scanned, they have been spotted. The casual flame break is going to be set that way, and Escape might have to think twice about approaching Alliance here. That Rider looking for anyone who can grab a Ruby. Any target is good one. Flying up and over, who will be the best target? Era quick to blink back. Quick for already in the ulti. He makes his move, Dying gets the grab back. They have no way to stop him except for a slow kick of a boulder smack. They'll finally slow him down, but the damage has already been done. Kez is going to be taken out of this fight. There'll be no wall for you, sir. Yeah. He's gone. They're back between the tower. Blood lusted up on the Razor and the Drow. Tons of damage, and this Dying should be a very natural down. transition to Roche if they want to. Beautiful. They, um, I don't think they should be going high ground against, the, against this, but maybe they uh, want to get some poking done. This delays the mech even further for escape. Uh, they're gonna back out. There is, in fact, a DD rune as well outside Roche Pit right now, so it would be so good for Alliance if they can go there. Looks like the Explode is already heading towards that top lane, and we'll just push out and do some casual farm there instead. <laughs> Damn it. Bit too risky, I suppose. But. They'll get back into it here. It looks like Loda is going the Morbid Mask, so Helm of the Dominator seems to be on route he's, for him. He's got the Shadow Blade as well on the Courier. Got to come out soon. There's a Dragonlance coming out for Razor as well, so that's going to help him with the damage output. Being able to hit from a little bit farther away. And you could just see, I mean, we were mentioning it in the draft that Bulldog is able to kind of get that lead in initiation. The response play from Escape is very limited. Uh, a flying out concoction or a boulder smash just move a little too slow. Yeah. And uh, Bulldogs are going to get what he's need, get what he needs and get out. And uh, unless there's a Venom Ward like in the previous fight to stop him, he's going to get what he wants. With that Blink Force that Battle Rider is a powerful, is powerful attack. initiator, that's for sure. And uh, they're not looking to shy away from a fight either as they go for the tier 2 top and no split pushes being done by Escape. They want to take the fight. They're oh, smoked up. I think this is like three straight smokes or something. Oh, they're 200 here. gold away from the mech on darks here. Dyer's what a sad time to smoke for escape if they the difference get forced between to. that one takeoff in the previous fight. Oh, oh. the attack here. The after is going right into the arms of the drought. Here he is, but he can silence it immediately, so he cannot follow up with the call. So there's going to be going down as well. Quaker tries to move for S4, but he's forced back in a way here. A good move in from Dyer's Alliance leads oh, yeah. to two Thunder successful attack. picks on both supports, and they'll be able to follow up with a tier 2 takedown. And that's why you're happy you have a Dazzle as well after you get hit by the Venomous ulti. You, you know, you don't care at all. Poison Nova doesn't do anything to you. you just keep healing up and you can keep going. It stays very good on the lines. Dyer's top tower has fallen. And that was a clutch uh, silence by Loda. So showing off some good reflexes there. Old man Loda. Old man Loda. Able to kind of Probably the oldest man in this match. Oh, for sure, dude. Yeah. These kids are by, by years. Some of them are children. Yeah, six. I see their ages, and I feel like an old man. <laughs> I feel way old. But young, talented, and fighting for their lives potentially is escape. As uh, this one not looking Dyer's as likely to hold out as it did attack. in game number one. I mean, a lot on the shoulders now of Koi Chai, I imagine, here in his alchemist. Radiant he's already got the range, he's already got the armor, attack. and he's chunking away yeah. at tier one Dyer's at the bottom middle lane, middle but he's, he's, he's building attack. up, but he's also about 6,000 gold away from the items Radiant that you really need to start yep. getting online, you know? Uh, at least Radiant the Manta travel is very necessary. Attack. Then when you get Octarine, you're really set, but yeah. at least the Manta uh, travel, then you can start pressuring the map. Because right now you just see Alliance, they're shoving lanes so much faster, they taking towers. The whole map, they yeah. just took out the final outer tower, and yeah, you mentioned, I mean, Alchemist still has quite a build Radiant's up ahead of him, but if he wants to get out there, there's going to be no real estate space left. Alliance have just claimed pretty much the majority of this map, I imagine. They might even consider getting something like a gem here in the near future and could yep. be able to just totally put escape in the dark. Yeah, that's very true. And Loda now with a full Silver Sedge upgrade as well on his Drow Ranger. Just great stat item, really cost effective. Lord Hulda as well. And uh, it's quite good against the uh, Axe, you can cancel a spinning. Okay. It just makes it feel like that stuff like a level 1 Poison Nova, a level 1 Magnetize, that is just not going to be enough. Look at like all the stat game here for Drow with her Dragonlance, with S4, his items, his uh, mech. 
is Dragonlance. They're going to yeah. be able to shrug off all of that magical damage. Yeah, the hood on EGM is such a big thing as oh, well. Hood, hood too. Yeah, hood and raindrops. He's not going to take any magical damage, he feels like. And he's an ogre, for God's sake. So It really seems like Escape is just not going to have enough firepower here. It, it comes down to Escape's axe. It's very, very big pressure on Era, and it seems to become like this scenario in many of Escape's games where Era has to deliver. And um, these pure Radiant damage spins, of course, can be one of their easiest Dyer's ways to win. Pull his best trump here to build a wall. <laughs> Nasty Wars. little bugs. Right in front, but it ends up being Radiant put on the Pearl Ditch. Yeah. Here for S4 and Loda, they make quick work of that. A nice little uh, shot right there. Yeah, but you don't really want to commit on a on an Aegis Brow Ranger. And likewise, you don't necessarily want to go on a Razor. So what do you do at this point? Pray, Waga, you pray. Here pray. comes Alliance. Radiant's Glyph is out, but Tier 3 is in trouble. Only level 2 vacuum as well, but they do have the mech on the side of escape this time. First time they have that for a team fight. Boy Club begins his TP back to be there for his comrades, and we'll see if escape can hold on to life here for game number 2, if Alliance will be walking away from the series with at least one point to their name. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't just deny the tower. 47 HP against the Drow and uh, Racer, both from Dragonlance. Uh, they yeah, don't. It's they don't do it. Okay. Lotus is That's gonna fun. snipe it. That's a lot of money. And, uh, they're all gonna be pretty happy. Attack. Lotus almost keeping up with this alchemist and net worth. That is a very bad sign for you. Escape. Yes, it is. And uh, are they gonna back off here? Or are they gonna keep going? Nope. Seems like they they want to keep the pressure up. They do have a lot of money on the race. Three point two k. Throw out the weave, and uh, they'll see what kind of use they can get out of it here. Moving in, yeah, they have a lot of money, but they could have a lot more if they can get a Rax. That, for sure. <laughs> the Greedy Alliance group. Oh, escape with the move from the previous game, yeah. trying to wrap around. Alliance, though, might have learned some lessons there from game number one and have a very Delta split positioning. Yeah, and EGM definitely. and Adam Bulldog up and above while S4 hangs on the lower Feel ground. Feel bad, Mr. Duran. Look at this. He keeps dropping down the board. Oh, they're just food. Oh, they're tiptoeing. They go really want to go. Go for the Rax, go for the gold. Yeah. Escape are tiptoeing closer and closer. But who do they jump? They want to get more people than... Look at EGM. Oh, He's no. trying to drag EGM into the base. Only slows him from going inside with the Gale. And it's as if he never got harassed in the first place. EGM is like, am I being harassed? Because... Uh-oh, Bulldog makes the move. Nice against the silence. Comes out the gap for him. Oh, they try to make the call, but the force staff gets Bulldog in low ground. Now S4 thinks he can get a snipe on Sindarin. Meanwhile, him new. That's their big high ground defender. Is it taking out the fight, Waga? 35 seconds. He's dead. No buyback. And this is when a battle lineup can really just shove up when you have the number advantage. Just keep healing everyone. Load is in, though, and he begins to go to work. Popping up shots right now. Gets the one range racks down like it's paper. And then goes for the melee here. Any way to stop the little lady? It doesn't look like yeah, it. Yeah, silence on the era as well. He's gonna go with the Roll in from Gapsor. He's got the force to commit. The Magnetize gets unleashed and he gets focus fired now. He's very weak, but he'll dish out everything he can before he's gonna get dropped. You stay alive decently, but again, the sustained power, the way to shrug it all off. Oh, Sindrin slithering away. He is gonna be fine, but the Rax is not. No, it's not. Middle and you can see it. Look at Alliance, just full life. It's as if they didn't get hit by it's all that. Akia, the magic of Akia. Beautiful support. He's going in, being sneaky here. Loda with his uh, Silver's Edge, but of course there was a ward, they saw him. Go back and uh, get your bearings, and uh, make a new approach to a new lane here. Drow, yeah, full Sun Jasha now purchased by Razor as well, so he's gonna have that coming out soon. Gonna make him a lot better at just chasing down people and slowing them down. It'll be hard for Alchemist to, to really go into this. Yeah, the Alchemist is... Just not really able to spread his out wing. I really think they should be waiting for the courier to come in though. They have Hurricane Pike, Sanjiasha, and Medallion on the courier. All of those things Dyer's are coming in right now. They need to get those upgrades. Alliance uh, already doing plenty of work without it though. Loading huh? some good work in from the low ground here. Escape are not going, so good thing. Of course, there is a cooldown on the Poison Nova and the Magnetize. Maybe they just feel that confident. Yep, 20 seconds before a magnetize is even Dyer's ready. By the time it is, Yapsor may have four stones to work with, but again, this man's damage, certainly level one, is just not enough. It's tickle damage here to Alliance. No doubt. Pump the precision aura. Push the legs. Oh, they're just gonna go again soon. Pipe completed on EGM, man. He's just a big monster at this point. Yeah. His ogre. He's hoping to make it all over now. Or escape team that will be 
guaranteed out now with a, with a loss here. It pretty much means there's no shot for them in any sort of mathematical situation of upper bracket run, so. But they're not giving up yet. They're still holding on for dear life. But Alliance, even with Aegis timing out, they don't really care much. Still going, of course. Dota will be a little bit more uh, safely positioned. They could definitely bring him down once. Sure. Oh, mid. Oh, from all people. He tries to run back in away, get some force of assistance oh. here, and he makes it to safety. Have Alliance been trying to an awkward situation. It looks like Bulldog is going to be the first to go down, and Alliance beeline it back to the bottom here. Going, going for the racks. One, but the racks are in trouble. S Force, Eye of the Storm, and right clips coming out from Lota. Should be able to do enough. Oh, no. As fast as possible, we can quickly silence and send back all. Follow up from Era. Gets the call, DJM and Lota. But where is the damage going to be coming from? It's going to be coming from Alliance as they take down Era. S Force still in the heart of the base. Happy to fight it Just out. Just healing up more and more for some Nova. Oh, Axe is back. King. Axe is back. Get and one. he's able to get the kill. Found it very appropriate that Bulldog was the only one who died in the first little engagement because he self fuels himself after grabbing the Alchemist. Instead of pulling the Alchemist towards his team, he got Yules, and I thought it was an enemy Yules at first, but he just misclicked. But it still worked out in the end. They still just got a Rax, the range Rax, of course, going down. A little bit of a hold by Escape. I mean, they'll take any win they can at this point with the net worth. This, I guess that's the unfortunate downside. I'm not sure the math technically and how the rubber band factor would work, but they have an Alchemist already on their team who's technically highest net worth, so I wonder if that hurts them when they try to make a, you know, oh, comeback kind of a swing. It does. It, it's based on the total net worth of the team, though, a lot. So since Alliance is ahead by 14,000, you still get a big swing when okay. you get kills. Um, it's based on that, and it's also based on the individual net worth of the, of the hero you kill. I believe. Doesn't um, stop Alliance from coming back for round number two. Yeah, it really doesn't. I think Loda looking maybe to pick up a Reaver before they go here. Not sure. He's got 3.2k gold sitting around the secret shop. And uh, it will be an Eagle song. So no. gotta go into the butterfly. Okay. More damage, of course, for his team. And here they come, looking to finish out what they had started. Simran's nasty little wards sitting there as always, ready to beat. Yep, there's some nice gold there for S4 he'll take up. But the melee racks still standing. Radiant's Alliance looking to fix that. Yeah, they're they're looking for any grab they can find, but right now gotta wait like 20 seconds for the next Firefly, I think. That's when you can look to grab someone. Mm -hmm. Um as Bad has it on cooldown. No stress really. Gonna prepare with the weave. Yeah, there's there's stress, it's just over on escape side. That's where the stress is really at right now. Finding and hoping for the ideal setup play here. S4 confident have to go on in front. is going to get called and they're going to try to drag him back. Oh, a swing and a miss on the boulder smash, but they will catch him with the grip, but they're not going to be offering a whole lot. He runs back and away. Yapter looks to make his move. Actually doesn't get a connection. It looks like they're with a magnify. Uh, he missed. It could be a force for a wise man to get the skate right out of the front, but it's a lion to take the bulk of the damage here. S4 barely going to get saved in the grave. Tries to make it out to safety, but is not going to be able to make it out. It's Sinjurin who catches him with that dot damage. Damage, yeah, giggling the whole way. Great hold there by Escape and just nice movement. They have strong team fight now with the max level vacuum and they're showing off the com uh, combo potential that they have. And the Lions, maybe they uh, they will realize here that okay, we need to complete up some key items before we go high ground, or uh, maybe look towards that next Roshan. Yeah, I would assume for both. Okay, get some items, get another Aegis. Uh oh, Kezzer's dead. Oh, yeah, Loda still hurts with that Silver Edge, of course. Yeah, it says don't even bother running out from the base here. They have the vision to see when they're moving out, and it's something Escape are going to have to take care of now. Yeah, for sure, and Escape also pinged out the uh, Roshan, realizing Radiant's that he could be up attack. at any moment now. And I don't know if they're in a position to contest anything, though. They have uh, one little ward giving some vision on Loda, at least, but it doesn't really matter much when you're dead. Uh, any chance Quakeva can get to get out of his house and outside for the farm he will take as he runs frantically through the map farming what he can now sporting about 4.5k here towards the next defense should he itemize any sort of different way when you're in a position now when it's always your backs against the wall and the push is always coming do you um, change the outfield at all or do you just keep no i i think that if anything gives you more reason to have the octarine next in fact because okay. that's going to help you just 
always keep the lanes shoved out. Also going to give you a lower cooldown on your uh, boost travel, which allows you to be more proactive. Quite oh. behind, Secret Shop is going to get spotted. He gets snagged up by Bulldog and pulled right back into the scene, but two times multicast is going to come out of life. Yep. They get him with the force snap, and his read gets good enough. Now the vacuum response comes up. He gets him with his gate to get him under the wall, but it's loaded from the low ground, popping off the good shots and the good damage. Now, Yaps or leads in, gets on the no one time. Alliance can't cross the wall to make an approach for escape, so they're gonna have to retreat. Yeah, but they're gonna check Roche and they will get a nice answer. He is up and he's ready. And they don't have to worry about that wall, they don't have to worry about that magnetize, they don't have to worry about pretty much anything from escape, they'll just take it clean. Yeah, and all they used really was the flaming lasso, of course, of the Batrider, so they'll be ready to just go for the uh, high ground siege immediately after this. Racer will be the one to pick it up. Go right to work. Escape. They gotta prepare. Yeah, they, they don't have much time right now. Alchemist trying to get whatever money he can before the high ground push is coming. He knows it's time like is he'd limited. He'd like to rush right for the Octarine, but at this point, you gotta hold a good amount of money for that buyback. <laughs> yeah, you. I think he buys it anyway. He buys it anyway, huh? Yeah. I don't think it. I think he needs the lower cooldown on Manta and on uh, Acid Spray as well. I can't disagree with this. Fair enough. For the rest of the escape, they're back inside the base already, preparing for the defense. Smoked up, waiting in the back. Oh, line. they can't actually walk in. It has a full wall of wards, so Alliance can't even walk inside. Yeah, they tried to smoke in, but it was blocked off. Well, potentially, they have to show themselves. Bulldog gets the snag, he's gonna go back area here. They Great. Yeah, now he's out instantly. No buyback for him. They're gonna be losing Sigurd. They're gonna be losing so much more. Alliance just ripped right through all the escape era, and Henry were not gonna be back for the response. Buyback, buyback. Lona going to work. Triple kill for him, S4 right by his side, it looks like Alliance are going to be able to tie this series up one to one. Yeah, it definitely looks like it. No way to really hold now three of your teammates dead. And look at this staff, it just keeps healing up. Even the Aegis is still standing. Alliance make it look a lot easier in game one. Game two, of course, was a real struggle for both teams in escape. Just uh, barely topped them there. Falling racks away, Koifa. We'll go in, dish out what he can, but oh my goodness, he gets hit with a triple stun. Loda brushes him off, Hurricane Pike, and Loda goes to work here, but there's the quick man to avoid the problem. Stuns up, moves in. Oh, good vacuum, but no one is really there. Wall, S4, very low. He's got speed, and he gets that. Roll forward from the absorb, Loda to low ground. Alliance, elusive and slippery. Yeah, very easy. I'm also trying to run away. Oh, nice head call from Hera, but... Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get the finish here for S4. It's not going to be good enough. Yeah, so gets off the bag of time, but they drug it off now, and that uh, is a pause. Oh. Alp has DC'd, apparently. Ugh. Awkward yeah. timing, unfortunately. That's actually the first one that I've seen, though, in any of our games where someone DC's during a team fight or in a bad moment, if you will. So, and to be fair, this game. The cards are I, I respect stats. them for wanting to to win against all odds, but I think Escape, they're gonna find themselves losing no matter what here. This is just such a such a commanding lead. But we will go here right away. Yep. You can see it's Koifa who's gonna find himself in a bit of a pickle here. He's already lassoed up and being pulled back from Bulldog. Loda looks to finish quick and stretch down Sidrid and company. And, uh, well, that leaves pretty much just Koikpa and just Kesu to defend. Kesu with really nothing else left to offer. It's all on Koikpa to do anything about it. But Alliance have just taken down the last set of racks. They have the Vegas now. It looks like they have the win. Yeah, they're just on. Making it work for it, though. And GG will come out any minute. There we go. All right, props to Alliance. As mentioned, game number one was a hell of a bar burner. Both sides back and forth with the escape ultimately coming out on top. But Alliance will be able to get a little bit of redemption for themselves as they claim a much easier win on the back of their draw and uh, yeah. Razor lineup. Yeah, really well played by both teams, though. Both showed up and played some good dope.